call your attention to Proverbs 16, verses 8 and 9. In the Old Testament, the book is Proverbs. The book is Proverbs, chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. Proverbs, chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. Proverbs 16, verses 8 and 9. Reading from the New King James Version, and when you found it, you will discover these words. Better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues without justice. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Amen. I want to talk about the Lord's direction. All right, all right. The Lord's direction. Make it plain, God. Make it plain. Come on now, let's do it. In the closing week of the impeachment trial of President Donald J. Trump, <laughs> it appeared that the Senate chaplain Reverend Barry Black throwed a whole lot of shade in his prayer. Mm. For you all, you all that's, that's, that's over 50 years old, the word shade means that he was getting down on them. Mm. Young folk already know that when, when you're throwing shade, you're throwing sucker punches. You, mm. You're throwing punches to someone when, when they're not really expecting it. So the news reporter, the internet, is buzzing with the preacher who has made history again. You know, every now and then, the preacher has to make history. All right. Every now and then, a preacher will tell it just like it is. All right, every now and then. And it will impact the whole world. All right. Pastor Barry Black, Chaplain Barry Black, said the words in his prayer, you know, when you're on the Senate floor, you don't just pray as you want to. You have to pray from a written strip. In the President's inauguration, you have to pray from a written strip. But the good thing about Chaplain Black, he prayed from a strip that he had written. <laughs> and he said in his prayer, Lord, don't let men think in our paraphrase, that when they do wrong, they will get away with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Remind us that we will reap what we sow. Yeah, 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 yeah. You do know that uh, it seems like his prayer was like bounding, bouncing ping pong balls because those in attendance and those that voted paid little or no attention to it. But we serve a God. Yeah, yeah. Who sits high. He looks low. And nothing is gone unseen to our God. You may be a little confused right now how God let me carry on, carry on. But the God we serve, He sees everything. He knows everything. He knows what you're doing before you even think to do it. Because he is the om omniscient God. He knows everything. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Thank God for preachers who will really call out sin. Thank God for preachers who won't let it go any old kind of way. Thank God for preachers who will stand on the mountaintop. Stay on the wall and tell men who are dying in their sin that there is a dead record. All right. Thank God for preachers who will call out those who have a lifetime in the sin. Making sure that we don't have proper health care. But I believe when you vote for health care, you ought to vote for your health care as well as the U.S. Senate's health care. Right, right, right. 
You ought to be one who is voting for, for the United States health care, and your health care ought to be the identical same as the one you vote. Right. All right. And I just believe that when you go through life, and you have a lifetime appointment, and you're sitting in a seat that you're in your 90s, you ought to give up that seat and give it to some young person. But I serve God who sees everything. God, God is seeing who's patting each other on the shoulder and shaking their head on this side. God is seeing who, who is pointing the finger and, and dapping in stuff and, and shaking and running and hiding their head. God sees everything. Brother, you may get away with Brother Miles, but you won't get away with God. God sees everything. He knows who starts confusion. He, he knows who lies and says he told the truth. He, he knows who is playing around when they ought to be serious. The God we serve sees and knows everything. Yes, sir. Because he's an omniscient God. Your boss may be mistreating you now, but don't worry about it. When God shows up, he sure enough don't show out. And when they do it in the dark, God will always bring it to light. And God will shine a spotlight on me right. Yeah. That's why as we enter into a new year, I say to those who walk in the door of the new beginning church, whatever you do, always get tied up in excellence and put aside new right. Yes, yes, because excellence shines a spotlight on me right. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. Reason why folks are upset because you being blessed, they're, they're upset and they say stuff like, well, you know, everybody's able. You ought to tell them, you sure right, everybody's not able. <laughs> but the God I serve, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's sure. the able God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you you driving what you driving and you just you're living where you live, you being blessed to the Lord, you're not throwing shade on anybody, you're not bragging about anything, and somebody will come up any time of the day and talk about, I remember when you were broke, busted, and disgusted. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them the last time you saw me broke, busted, and disgusted. That was my last time. Because God I serve. Psalm 24 says that the earth is the law. And the fullness thereof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they that dwell within, all of it belongs to the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we have to be good stewards. We have to be good stewards and, and follow God's directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to be good stewards and follow the Lord's instruction. We have to be good stewards and make the best of God's resources that we can ever do. That's right. All right. Don't find yourself on planet Earth living. And think you're going to live from now on. All right. All right, all right. The world has been shaken. Yeah. The world has been shaken by nine people falling out of the air in a crash and no one living. Yeah, yeah. The world is not just shaken because of Corbin Bryan being on board. He just calls attention to who God really is. All right. It's the life that God has granted us with just for a moment in time. God has given us this life for a moment. And you need to make sure that you make a legacy, create a legacy before you leave here. Because when you're dead, your legacy discontinues. Whatever you haven't done when you're dead, you're out of here. Now I said it's a great thing when preachers stand flat-footed and tell the truth. Amen. But there is and there are some lying preachers. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Show you right. Mm -hmm. There are even in the 21st century there are some preachers who 
will not obey God. Yeah, right, right. There are some preachers who will find a way to financially profit of those who are down and out, those who are not doing well. There are some preachers that will tell you anything just to get a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Whenever, whenever there's a disaster, whenever there's a disaster, both saints and sinners are put to the test. All right. Whenever there's a disaster, whenever there's a, a great publicity of trouble, people don't care what you're going through. A storm can hit your house, the bomb can blow up your house, folk will still be lootering at your house. They will still take your stuff. You're trying to recover. You got all mental anguish going on about you, and they still will take the little stuff that you did manage to say. Yeah. Yeah. So you got this preacher who comes out and say that he can raise COVID from the dead. If they give him 10% of his multi-million dollar value. Well, let me tell you. The word of God and the man of God ought not be concerned. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. If, if, if you have the ability to do something great on behalf of somebody else, let the Lord bless you. A price should not be put on everything. Preachers ought not get, uh oh, I'm about to mess up, but they ought not receive money for everything. And certainly preachers ought not be lying on what they can do for a few measly a hundred million dollars. Yeah, so he get, he gets there and he drags God into it. Yeah. Anytime you hear a person talk about 10%, even, that, even when you go out to eat, they don't ask for 10%, they ask for 15, for 20, for 25, 50%. They ask, they ask you, and I just kind of put my own amount of value in there. I appreciate you based on what service you have given. He drags God in and he says, if they give me 10% of his value, I will raise him from the dead. And we got people who are following that mess. We got floods of people who are gathering in and out of doors to follow preachers that will stand flat-footed and lie to you, looking in your face and never flinch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Apostles. Prophets. Evangelists. Pastor teachers. Ephesians says that God has given them for the work of the ministry. Yeah. All right. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meaning he has given these men for the building up of the body of Christ. All and right. when foolishness come out like this, then folks start looking at decent preachers the wrong way. Yes, sir. That's why, that's why the, 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 the wise writer in Proverbs 16 says it is, it is better to have a little in righteousness yeah, yeah, yeah. than to have a whole heap mm -hmm. without justice. Yeah, All right. Right now. When I grew up as a boy, you would, I would have parents, parents all over the city, all over the country that would tell their children they were caught up in sinful activity that reaped a lot of money in sinful activity. These men and these women, these senior saints who were barely making it would tell their children, don't bring that sinful money in my house. Right don't, I don't want to live off of you getting and giving me money because I don't like the way you're going about to get it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's what it says in this text. It says, it's better for you to live off a little bit yeah. and walk with God in righteousness than to have a whole lot of income, a whole lot of revenue gotten in an ungodly way. Yeah, right, right. We ought to look, we ought to act, we ought to carry ourselves in a godly way, and we ought to gain stuff in a godly way. All right. All right. All right. Because if you lie to get it, you're going to lose it. That's right. <laughs> if, you, if you cheat to get it, it's just a matter of time. It's going to flee from you. But when you gain
obtain it in a righteous manner, when you get it in a righteous way, then God has a way of blessing the little bit that you have and making it in much. Right. We have to take directions from God. We, yes, young people, young people, never get caught up in get rich quick schemes. All right. Because if you get it quick, it's going to run away quick. Yeah, right, right. There, there are only a few things that get rich quick schemes can get you. Number one, it can get you killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's too good to be true, guess what? It's not true. Yeah, right. Number two, if, if you get caught up in a get rich quick scheme or whatever you get caught up in, not only will you get, it get you killed, it gets you in jail. That's All right. right. And if you know like I don't know, I don't want to go to jail. They don't treat you right in jail. They, I've had my share of peanut butter and sometimes jelly sandwiches. I don't want to go back down there anymore. The, the big hotel down there on 1201, I don't want to spend any more time in that place. The place down there, the hotel that's in the backside of Fort Bend County, I don't want to spend no more time there. I've had my share. And Deacon African testify, he doesn't want to go back there either. <laughs> I've had my share. The songwriter says, I've had my share of ups and downs. It's all right for me to be down, but I don't want to go downtown anymore. If you get caught up in a get rich quick scheme, you're going to find yourself dead, you're going to find yourself in jail, or you're going to find yourself with the wrong song. Yes, sir. And whenever you find yourself with the wrong people, they have bad influences on your life. All right. Forget about whether he's tall, dark, and handsome. He's living for the Lord. Right. I told you on regular basis, you better leave Mr. Tall, dark, and handsome alone and hang out with Mr. Short, red, and wrinkled sometimes <laughs> simply because God has called us to live in righteousness. Right. Oh, man, look at how she's shaped. You better check out it on the inside. <laughs> Get the inside because once you get hooked up with somebody, it's the inside that's gonna keep you together. Married right. couples, married couples. I, I ask the same question to every couple that comes to get counseling, pre-marriage counseling. Ask the same question: Why y'all want to get married? <coughs> Why y'all want to get married? I love him. I mean, they just googling and giggling. And I love her. I'm so crazy about her. She completes me. Complete me is just such a sweet thing. And then he treats me like no one else has ever treated me. And I say to them, love will get you married. But it takes commitment to hang in there. Because the shape she has today may not be there tomorrow. The walk in the strut she has today. Try it out 20 years from now. Yeah. It's going to be leaning like the leading power of this. Yeah. Yeah. You better get married for something other than love because yeah. love will get you married. Yeah. But let me tell you, life will throw a kick in love. Yeah. Yeah. And when life throws a kick in love, you better be ready for it because it's going to come hard and heavy and you won't know from which direction it will come. Sure, yeah. you're right. Yeah. She just so pretty. He, he, he's so fine. In my days, we never called a man fine. We, we called a sister. You know how old I am, don't you? We called women fine. We never called men. Ooh, look at his fine. Let me tell you, fineness will get you killed. Fineness will get you put in jail for killing him. All right. You better check out the inside. Yeah. Because it's what's on the inside that makes the outside worth living for. You're, you're right. You better check it out. There are some folk in this room right now that can tell you, I'll never do it again, and I will never believe in anybody ever again that tells me the same place. The same thing. And the same time. Oh, man. The text, the text says, the text says, it is better, it is better to have just a little bit in righteousness. You don't need a scheme to get it. And you know, folks see a lot on God and how God is blessing. You've seen the Facebook post. If you read this, 
you will be blessed and highly favored and you will be rich by in the morning or, or God is going to bless you by next week. Let me tell you how you're going to be blessed by next week. You work this week so you can be blessed by next week. If you didn't show up at your job this week, don't look for any blessing next week. The problem is we raise little boys to be little sisters because we have not shown them how to work. And now they take advantage of somebody's dog. We have to show them that hard work won't kill you. Hard work will make you a man. And then girls and women put up with this excuse. I can't find a job. I saw a guy the other day out there with a sign. Turn it this way, it says slow. Turn it this way, it says stop. Let me tell you, you can find a job in Houston somewhere. You may not be sitting in the air condition all day long, but if you want to work, you won't mind working in the sun. Working in the sun gives you vitamin D and it makes you healthy. We have spoiled boys. We have made boys little girls. And girls have no real men to marry. Because once trouble hit, they go because they never had to put up with anything. And then their mama would tell them, come on back home. We got to put up with that back home. But it takes working. It takes strength. It takes commitment. It takes deliverance from this old way of doing things to doing things the right way. All right, show you right. The God we serve, looking forward to uh, uh, speak, uh, brother, brother Miles. Can you switch seats with the young man sitting next to you? If you would do that, that would help everybody in the room out. It's because we have let things go on so long until. We have gotten to a point where wrong begins to look like right. All right, so you're right. When we, and we've told the lie so many times over and over again, we begin to believe it. We got an orange man in the White House that had told a lie over and over again until now he really, really believed it. And we call it dementia. I call it crazy. And we have to get to a point in our lives where we call spade black and spade is a spade. All right. All right. The, text, the text says we have to follow God's direction because regardless of what goes on, we ought to be satisfied with the little God is in us. This word better means bountiful. This word better means pleasure. We ought to have pleasure in what we do. This word better means favor. Yeah, yeah. It is better to have favor than to have money. That's right. Our boys and girls are getting caught up on money and get rich quick schemes and it's taking them down the hill and down the ground because they want to wear a chain. They want to wear bling bling. Forget about what you look like on the outside. Concern yourself on what's going on on the inside. All right. In my days, women wore earrings. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We have to build men. That's right. We have to build them in such a way that they understand who they are. Yeah. Just because Michael Jordan wears one doesn't mean you ought to put it on. That's right. Build men. Show men how to be who they are without any exceptions and, and build their self-esteem and, and tell them that they are somebody regardless of if they're with somebody. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So many girls are so messed up in their mind because some joker that looked like he just crawled out from the rock just walked off and left them and you just tore it up. Girl, you ought to be throwing your hands up in the air and waving like you just don't care. And thank the Lord that God has blessed you. With you. Jay, in my day, there was a song out. There was a song that I'm going to throw my hands up in the air and wave like I just don't care. You better honor God in what you do because God will give you better. He will give you faith. God will give you better. The word better means prosperity. God will give you wealth. God, You see, you chasing money and God trying to give you wealth. 
there's a difference in money and wealth. And you see, to get money, when you spend it, it's gone. Yeah. But when you're wealthy, that's what they say, he's valued at this amount. When, when you're wealthy, you can put your hand on some of it, and when you put that out there, and when you get rid of that, there's more where the sun, where that came from. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So you're right. You ought to be, you ought to be watching God so God can give you wisdom so you yeah. can get wealth and so you can keep wealth. Because a fool in his money will soon depart. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be wealthy. You, you don't just want to be rich. You want to be wealthy. That means you're valuable even when you're dead. All right. Sam Walton, children are still filter rich. Mm -hmm. Sam Walton is using your money from the grave. Yeah. And he's keeping it because he's not playing, paying employees a minimum wage. And every time I get one of those baskets, you know what I'm about to say. It needs a front end alignment and a rear end alignment. And it needs a balance because when you roll it, doo, 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 yeah, doo, yeah. I'm going right in trying to go left. <laughs> and show you right. He's wealthy. He's wealthy. He's wealthy because he's still making your money even from the grave. Yeah, right. Thank God that HEB is coming to the neighborhood. All right. All right. At least they got brand new baskets. <laughs> At least I don't have to go in there and act like I don't, I don't press 25, 30 pounds every aisle I go down. <laughs> we need to understand that there's more to life than what we see. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah we ought to have 20, 20 field vision, but our vision ought to be laid before the Lord. Yeah, right. Verses 1 and verse number 4 says that we ought to commit our ways unto the Lord. And as we commit our ways unto the Lord, God blesses us. And he's able to bless us beyond what we can drink. You just heard the song. The song said, I'm leaning on Jesus. I'm learning how to lean on Jesus. And he's able to make my dreams come true, even the dreams that I've never even thought of. You better learn to lean on Jesus. So you need to learn to take Jesus' advice. This word righteousness talks about godliness, right acts, justice. And vindication. The word vindication means that I've been set free. It's mean, it, it doesn't mean that I'm righteous. It means that God has made me righteous. Yeah, right. Through Jesus Christ, he made me righteous. I'm not righteous of myself. Because everything I do, even when I do good, is not enough to measure up to Jesus. Yeah, right. I bet you every man in the room can testify. Man, it didn't matter what I did. She never was set free. <laughs> Man, I got up early in the morning. She said, I got up too early. Yeah. Man, I went to bed late. She went, I went to bed too late. Man, I mowed the yard. She said, I didn't weed. Right, right. There's nothing I can do to satisfy this woman. But let me stop by to tell you, on my way to the rapture to let you know, there's nothing we can do to satisfy God. Yeah. And nothing God can do to make us righteous other than through Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're only righteous through him. He makes us righteous. Yeah, yeah. So stop making that man act like he's Jesus. Stop making him think he is Jesus. Bless him and allow God to bless you. We understand that it's God's directions that we need to take. It says, a man's heart devises his plans. A man's heart set his ways in action. A man's heart Plan thing. Let me tell you, brother, you ought to have a vision for your life. And if you got a woman near you, you ought to have a vision for your life, for her life, and for y'all life. You ought to have, you ought to be, young lady, ask him what is his vision for life. You're gonna throw a lot of them off the track you ask him stuff like that. Vision? What's that? Give him a minute to Google it. Every man, with, before, before Adam was placed with Eve, God gave him a vision and the ability to see visions. Yeah, yeah. Before God gave him Eve, he gave him a job. Yeah. The Bible says if he will not work, if he refuses to work, he ought not eat. Now let me, let me set the brother free right here. It didn't say if he can't find a job. It didn't say if he wasn't looking for a job. It did say if he just laid and will not do anything. Yeah, right, he all not eat. Right. All right. And so if he ain't going to eat, you ain't going to eat. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> and you ought not be bringing home the big, the bacon, the biscuits, and cooking it too. <laughs> he ought to bring some, some nothing to the table. Yes, sir. We have to grow men and boys up to be men. And, and, and that's why women walk around here talking crazy now. Well, you know, a woman knows what a woman needs. That's foolishness. That's satanic. That's not of God. That's foolishness. That's why, that's why, that's why God said Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Yeah, that's why he said it. <laughs> Yeah, a man ought to know what a man needs, but I don't want Deacon Irvin rubbing up against me. I mean, we, we, when we're working, let's work. When work is over, we shake our hands, we hug and embrace, and senior deuces don't want to be here. It's done, brother. You ain't got to follow me home. You ain't got to see me home in the dark. You don't have to be involved with me. Brother, we just finished the work. Hallelujah. And that's just the way it ought to be. I ain't going to be touching all over you. I ain't going to be tapping you. I ain't going to be rubbing all over you. And then days are out when you pat them on the football field. Now those days are over. Touching. I mean, when, when I grew up, boys, there was no touching. I mean, they tapping and moving around. That, that wasn't none of that going on in my day. Y'all do so much touching. Oh, Jesus. Deliver me for boys is always touching each other. Too much touching going on. You ought to have plans. You ought to have plans for your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and as you plan, you ought to map your plan out. That's right. You ought to sit up every morning. You ought to get up and look at your plan and pray over, pray over your plan. Every night, you ought to look at your plan and, and pray over your plan. Yeah. All during the day. And when you get a break, you ought to, ought to look at your plan. How many folk on planet Earth do not have any kind of plan? They just exist and they're not even living. They're just waking up in the morning going to sleep. What you got planned for tomorrow? I don't know, but tomorrow get here, I plan. <laughs> you need a plan. You need a plan. If you're in debt, you need a plan to get out of debt. All right, now. If you're in, you're in the street, you ought to have a plan to get out of the street. If you're homeless, you ought to have a plan to go to a shelter. If you're in a shelter, you ought to have a plan to get an apartment. If you're in an apartment, you ought to have a plan to get a house. You ought to have a plan to move from one level to the other. Too many people have no plan. They just, hey, how you doing? Ain't nothing to just chilling. It's a dangerous thing to just chill. It's a dangerous thing. I'm just chilling. I'm just chilling, man. Chilling. You ain't got time to chill. Here I am, I ain't got time to stop and go to the restroom and you chill. I'm trying to get something done. I'm trying to hold it till I get to the next stop because I'm trying to get something done. And here you are. I done made 50 rounds around the city and you still chill. Y'all have a plan. If, if your plan is to get married, you, you ought to have a step that step. You ought to have a plan. Amen. Process. I'm just going to tell you, when I, when I went to Mr. Orr, I talked to him for about 20 minutes in person. <laughs> so, Mr. Orr, let me just say, I want to marry your daughter. Mm -hmm. right. And first of all, I wore the right thing when I went to the house. <laughs> My bridges one side. <laughs> I ain't have tattoos all over me. If I did, they weren't going to be showing. <laughs> And when I walked in the door, I spoke because I was the one coming in the door. That's All right. right. That's right. I had my shave on. I had my hair cut doing it. I didn't have to cut much, but I had my hair cut much. <laughs> and when I walked in, I said, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Yeah. And they had, because I had talked to them a few times on the phone, I, they had me breakfast when I got there. <laughs> You see, when you know how to carry yourself and you have a plan, folk will bless you regardless of what you, whether you deserve it or not. I couldn't fake it because that's how I was brought, brought up. Amen. That night after the recital, you know, in the old house, all the recital is Super Bowl. <laughs> after the recital, we sit over in the corner, we talk for 25 minutes, and I said, Brother Or, I just want to marry your daughter, and I didn't just get up and propose to her, I asked for her hand in marriage. Right. 
And during that conversation, I made him some promises. Brother or deacon, or if you allow me to marry your daughter, you will never have to worry about anything ever again from this dog. You don't have to worry about her car running. You don't have to worry about her, her getting in and out the house safely. You don't have to worry about whether she's going to eat every night. Matter of fact, she eats three, four, five, six times a day now because I made that promise, I guess. <laughs> what happened to the men? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who could promise daddy that daddy, you don't have to worry about anything from this day forward? Before he reached his death, he said to, to, to another son-in-law and myself, I want to thank y'all for taking care of my daughter. Yes, thank you for keeping your promise. Yes, yes. He didn't have to go through this motion of, now look, she, I raised her and you ain't got to raise her and if you don't like her, you can break. He didn't have to go through all that wine with me. <laughs> we need men who are going to be men who yeah, have a plan, right, yeah, yeah. who right. women can follow. And women, we need you to choose a man who you can follow, who can be followed to, for you to follow him. You, you can't just go and pull him out the air. And that, that's what sanctified women do. You know, they get so holy until the Lord is going to send me somebody. I'm going to go buy my dress right now. The Lord, And the first thing that drives up, oh, you must be from the Lord. <laughs> You gotta have a plan. You gotta have a plan. And you gotta have a plan that will, will line up with God. And you take your plan and give it to God, and God will bless it. Take your plan. Take, take your plan and take it before the Lord. Women ought to have plans. Look, girls ought to dream of being something special, even when they're small. Yeah. Regardless of how old you are, you ought to want to be three, four, five things before you get grown. Yes, sir. And then you narrow them down as you see what your aptitude is for those things. We got so many boys that want to be football stars. Can't run a ball without playing. We got so many boys that's going to take LeBron James' job. It can jump this high. We have too many people who are going to be the world's greatest soccer player, but they don't want to practice. Say it. Say it. We have to know that work comes and sacrifice comes before the blessing. Education comes before the blessing. Stick to it, this comes before the blessing. Too many young folks tell me, oh, I got a good job. Girl told me the other day, I got a good job and I can give you one. Like, I need a job. Like, I need something else to do. I, I, I got a good job. They got me 401k. They got me a retirement plan. They match 6%. They got a medical plan. I don't even have to pay for the medical. It's a good job. I said, girl, that's a good job. You land a good job. You need to make sure you're there. And before I could finish what I said, she said, but I ain't going to be there for two years. <laughs> Best job she's ever seen. Mm. But she's not going to be there but two years. Mm. She said, you know us millennials, we millennials, we don't stay anywhere long. Oh, well. And I said, your money will never be long. Yeah. <laughs> your benefits will never be long. Yeah. And then the first time the boss man says something you don't like, I'm gone, I ain't got to put up there. You sure right. Yeah. You sure right. You sure right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Trouble that I don't have to put up with. Trouble don't last all day. God wants the man's heart to devise a plan. You need to devise a plan. And when you devise a plan, present that plan before the Lord. And the Lord will direct your step. When the Lord directs your step, he doesn't just launch you into the blessing. He shows you the steps and the maneuvers and how to navigate through the blessing. Yeah, yeah. See, we have to go through the process. That's the right. problem is, we don't want to go through the process. Everything has a process. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Babies are not born at the time of conception. Some of them take nine months. Some of them take six months. Some of them take eight and a half months. The bottom line is, there's 
a process that everybody got to go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me just plug this right here, right in here. It doesn't matter how you conceive. Every baby that God has given is straight from God. And every baby is special to God. Whether you're married or not, it is special to God. Now, let me tell you what I didn't say. <laughs> let me tell you, I said every baby is special to God. All right. It's a blessing from God. Yeah. Now, I didn't say just go out there and do what you do. <laughs> you want to stay with verse number eight and stay walking in the privileges of God. Yeah. All right. And if you mess up, don't let old folk talk you down. They messed up too. Yeah. And when you messed up and you fall off the horse, get back on the horse and ride again. Yeah. Yeah. We got we as a church have to stop cutting folk up and cutting them down because they make the same mistake or different mistakes than what we made. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Devise a plan. Yeah. I don't care if you retire, you ought to have a plan. Right. All right. You ought to have a death plan. You, you ought to have a plan so folk won't be fighting when you leave here. You right, right. I mean, these good little children you got now, no. they'll turn the church inside out when you go. Right. Yes, fighting over $2. Yeah. Fighting over who's going to stay in the house. Fighting, fighting over who's going to drive the car. Fighting over who's going to carry the keys. Fighting over who's going to make a decision at the place of the funeral home and at the place of the church. Yeah. If you have a plan, Put somebody over the plan that's other right. than your children. All right. That's right. That's right. You can't so involve right. people who are part of the plan that's and right. then let them make the decision because it's never going to come out right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But when you put a, a third party involved, a great third party, you may have to pay the third party a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you're out of here anyway. Mm -hmm. You ought to have a plan. You ought to have a plan. You ought to have a plan. Every person ought to have a will or a pre need policy, insurance, or something. You ought to have a plan. And put that plan before the Lord. And then you can't just put the one you like the most at 50%. All right. Because the one you like the most may not be the just one. Come on. Now. May not be the righteous one. Be real with yourself. Be real. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just counseling right now. This is sleep. This is all Sunday morning. There's no chart for it. Be real with yourself. You must know your flocks and herds. You must know if if they crazy now, when you dead, they gonna be even crazier. They really gonna have to fool in. right. That's why I tell people now, look, you didn't have a plan, so don't come holding up the church service while we are, uh, no, why you take my mama? I'm grabbing on the ground, open the casket up. It should have been me. I tell them, take, take that body out and lay that body in there. <laughs> they want to go. Yeah, right. Folk can really show themselves. Right. But when you have a plan, we already know we're going to leave here, right? Y'all do know that, right? right. You know we're going to leave here. We got to leave. You got to go. Your, your body, the preacher is going to stand over it. Mm -hmm. And he's going to say, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and earth to earth. Mm -hmm. My dear brother and sister is no longer with us. We are depositing this body back into the ground from which it, come, it has come. And we are looking forward to the general resurrection. Where Jesus of Christ cracks the sky, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up to meet him in the air. That's right. And then he's going to turn to the other preacher and say, now you do the benediction. And after the benediction, he's going to say, well, you know, you all ran red lights because you had a police escort coming here. And you were able to run stop signs and red lights. We don't have the police with us when we're going back. You need to stop at every stop sign and every red light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we go back to the fellowship hall. We eat fried chicken, baked beans, and greens, and that person gets forgotten. Mm -hmm. That's right. We got to leave here. That's right. You need to plan like you're leaving here. And more importantly, since you know you got to leave here, you need to get your life in order before you leave here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If a 13-year-old can, can die in a Frank plane crash, you don't have enough time to get it right. Yeah, same, same. And the other day, we buried a 11-month-old. If he had to be buried, then you don't have enough time to get it right. Yeah. Today is not promised. Even today is not promised. We got a plan, all right. We got a plan to watch the Super Bowl today. That's the, that's the extent of our plan. We have to have a plan for our life because at the end of the day, the Kansas City Chiefs 
will not be on your agenda and you will not be on theirs. San Francisco 49ers, have they dropped off anything at your house lately? You need a plan for your life, not a plan for other folk. Like we, can, we, we get caught up in conversation about who's going to win the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl really means nothing to me but entertainment. What means something to me that when I'm out of here, my family is well taken care of. Nobody has to take up any money. Nobody has to give this and give that. It's because we have a plan. And when we have a plan, we put that plan before the Lord. This word Lord, this word Lord is Anna. He is the, the great God, the master. He is the God that makes ways out of the way. Yeah. This word Lord, you notice that it's all caps. It is the Anna God. It is the God who can do things that nobody else can do. He is like no other God. He's not like any idol God. He's not like Lexus or Ford. He is not like GM or BM and W. He's not like Mercedes. He's not like Jaguar. He is the great God himself. He is our master, and we ought to do what our master says to do. He's our God. He is our God. He, he is the God that watches over us all night long. The songwriter was here, he said like this, all night and all day. The angels of the Lord kept watching over me all night and all day. The angels of the Lord kept me in my right mind all night and all day. God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. I thank God for this God who, who goes where he wants to go, does what he wants to do, with whom he chooses to do. And sooner or later, the city is going to shut down because God is going to be in control and he's going to show up like the preacher said. You're going to reap what you sow. Yeah. You're going to reap what you sow. And see, they think since they're in their 90s and 70s and 60s that they've lived their life. But there's somebody special to them in their life. And God will not let them die until God redeem his time. God is not going to let them die until God put them on front stage and they'll That's how you wait have to live in righteousness. Walk, walk with God. You got to live in righteousness and walk with God. Because the man and the woman who lived in righteousness, David would tell you that out of all my life, I was young and now I'm old. And out of all the things I've seen in my life, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And I've never seen the seed of the righteous begging for bread. Some of us are blessed in this room because we are the seed of the righteous. We're the seed of the righteous. God has blessed us. And we all have a plan to bless him and to bless others. A man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. His word steps mean that every course of action that you go through, God is able to navigate you through it. That's why the song, the psalmist would tell you, and she was here today, would tell you that they dug ditches for them. Mm -hmm. And see, we got it all wrong. We think when people dig ditches, they better dig two because the first one, they gonna fall in. Let me tell you, that ain't for me. <laughs> Ooh, that's terrible English. Yeah? That's not for me. The reason why it's not for me, because the God I serve won't let me fall in. The Bible says that when my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and they fell and they were like those who were headed to hell. It's because God is able to keep us in our right mind, keep us in our righteousness. Oh, he paid the price over 2,000 years ago. He did, I tell you. He took the dogwood tree, Jesus did. He took the tree, I tell you. He carried it up. The skull hill called our doctor. He, they hung him high. They dropped him low. They nailed him tight. He died on Calvary. He died, I tell you. They laid him in a bottle too. It was a bottle too because he didn't need it too long. Before Pilate could change the guard, while the dew was yet on the ground, he got up early that third day morning with all power. All power in heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus, he makes a way out of no way. He does it over and 
over again. And one of these old days, he's going to crack the sky. And the dead in Christ will rise. And those who remain with this faith in him will rise. And we will meet him in there. All right. Hallelujah to the Lord. I'm going on the other side. I'm, I'm on the other side. If I don't wake up in the morning, don't worry about it. I'm on the other side where there will be no more sleeping. No more crying. No more backsliding. No more lying. I'm going to a place of no more. No more arthritis. No more strokes. No more heart attack. Nobody mistreat me. I'm going to be forever with the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lord. I'm going to spend my time with the one who died for me. And has set me free. Yes, the door of the church is open. Amen. The invitation is accepted. You are coming, Jesus. Amen. It is that Jesus who has made us who we are. It is that Jesus who directions we are to follow. Yes, yes, yes. He died for us over 2,000 years ago. Oh, sure you're right. He rose from the dead. Yes, he did. And he's still making a way out of nowhere. All right. Thank God for Jesus. In the midst of our failures and our frailties, he keeps on blessing us. He keeps, yes, sir. He keeps on making the way. In the midst of our mistakes, in the midst of what we didn't mean to do, he keeps on, he keeps on blessing us. Thank God for Jesus, for the Lord, the Master, the one who is Ananias. He keeps right on blessing us. If you're here today and you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. You can come to him right now. You can meet Jesus. In the departing of your sin, you can get to know him. Yes. The door is open. The invitation is still open. If you've never met Jesus, why don't you come and let us introduce him to you? If you're here and you're in between church homes but you don't have a church home, why don't you come? I recommend this one. When Jesus is the center of attention and he is the main attraction, the door is open. Will you come? If you're here and you're struggling with sin like all of us are, why don't you come and let the church pray with you and pray for you? The door is open. Will you come? Come to Jesus just as you are. Don't wait till you get it right. You can't get it right. Come to Jesus and let him get it right for you.